How you doing, everybody? <laughs> I finally got here on time. I was a little late in getting the um, uh, the announcement up, so sorry about that. Uh, anyhow, what I what I wanted to talk about today. Hi, Mark. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, really tracking down a movement, and I I still. I'm trying to find out more about this, uh, the Jacques 736. But I found another movement. Um, yeah, I know. Hey, is the sound okay, guys? Because uh, I left my fan on because it is miserably muggy. But if, if the fan is getting in the way, let me know. Hi, Donald. Hi, Dominic. Hi, Blake. Um, let me know if, this, if, if you have funny sound and I'll get the uh, fan turned off. Sounds okay. Great. Thanks, Mark. Okay, good. I, 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 I worry about the fan again. Man, I tell you, we've had this miserably hot and muggy weather. So, hi, Javier. How you doing? Good to hear. Um, let me tell you, this is, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've been trying to figure out, like, a number of things. Back around, oh, I'll say around 2005, um, Roger uh, Doobie was, um, Roger Doobie was, uh, that, that was, he had just sort of uh, left uh, the company called Roger uh, Doobie, uh, Roger Doobie, something like that. Anyway, um, and one of the things, he had worked for Pat, uh, Patek Philippe for 14 years. And one of the things that he thought was very important for his movements, hi, Paul, one of the things that was important for his movements was a Geneva seal, right? Uh, at the time, during this period, almost all of them were going to Patek Philippe. Um, I have, I have a 2013 Veseron Constantin, uh, American 1921, uh, that has a uh, a um, Geneva seal. I, I want to say the French word for it is pension de something or other. Anyway, uh, so. This was a big deal to him. Now, up, like I said, up to that time, just about all of the Patek Philippe's had the Geneva seal. Um, my uh, Patek Philippe from late 60s has a Geneva seal. So it was something there. And apparently, during the period that um, Duby worked for Patek Philippe, he felt that if, his, if he made a movement and it didn't have the Geneva seal on it, it wasn't quite up to snuff. And this is, they had a number of criteria that they had to meet. And so um, sometime in the, right around the mid aughts, I guess, around 2004 to 2006, somewhere in there, uh, they got their Geneva seal and they had, they had a couple movements. Uh, one was called the, RD-57, and I think the RD-57 was a Lamania. Hey, listen, guys, too. If there's anything I say that's wrong and you know it, let me know, because I'm really on a quest right now, uh, and I would love to hear somebody say, well, that's not right. Here's, the, here's what's going on. That would be very helpful. So um, I the, the, the movement that I found uh, that had the little – a uh, stamp on it for the Geneva seal was a an RD-14, okay? Roger Duby 14. So I thought, ah, okay. Uh, that must be the one that, uh, that they're looking at. I looked all over the place, everywhere, and there's nothing about the RD-14. I mean, there's a lot if you go to, you know, uh, uh, eBay or Chrono24 or any of these other places, all of these watches with a an RD twenty four uh, an RD fourteen in them are all over the place. Uh, if I went when I went to different places that listed 
the Roger Duby movements, it's never there. They have the, the more complicated ones. In fact, they even had the ones that when Jean-Marc Viderec and Roger Duby were both working for H uh, for um, Harry Winston, they developed the biretrograde. <laughs> and the one that I have is one of the watches from that era, my uh, uh, Harry Winston uh, premier biretrograde. Is from when, when they were working together at uh, uh, doing some stuff for Harry Winston. So it was, you know, so, so here's this guy, and I would um, shortly, like two or three days after he died, I had done a, a video on Roger Duby and was talking about all of his stuff. And uh, he was like, this guy was huge, far more so than I realized uh, then or now. All right, and, and all of these people, all of these really great watchmakers say, oh man, this guy is, he's just great to work with. And he, his designs, the, the one thing that he had, he had <laughs> this guy who was a Portuguese guy. Uh, he was, he had met him, the guy was a waiter. I think his name was Diaz. <laughs> and so he was really enthusiastic about starting a watch company. Uh, in Switzerland, and had all these ideas, and I, and I guess he had done some design work. He was a designer, and I guess he some other stuff. But anyway, he and Roger Dubuis hit it off about the time that Roger Dubuis, after he had left Patek Philippe, and then he had a, his own shop for a number of years doing repairs and so forth. And so by the time he got back into it, this guy uh, had all of the talents that all of the contemporary ones have. They, they worked in a uh, restoration of, you know, F.P. Jorn, Vutenlan, and uh, Marcel Parmigiana. You'd name them, and they all had that one thing in common. They had spent some time with clocks and or watches doing restoration. And so to do restoration, a lot of times you had to make a part that no longer existed. So... This was you know, like this guy's really doing some interesting stuff, and he he wanted to be sort of a quote unquote rebel, all right, uh, compared to the work that he did at Patek Philippe. Patek Philippe, very traditional, very predictable. Okay, I mean, like when Patek Philippe came out with their uh, pilot's watch, it was initially it was called a, a Calatrava pilot watch. They, the, all of the old uh, Patek Philippe uh, collectors had a fit initially. And then they, 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 I guess they took it out of the Kala Travel line and put it somewhere else, and, that, and they calmed down. Uh, it's a cool watch, too, by the way. So anyway, uh, but Roger, Roger wanted to try something different. Now, he's with this goofy guy, Diaz, who, like I said, Diaz was a waiter in a, in a Swiss restaurant <laughs> where... Doobie was having lunch or something, and they got to talking. And so this guy said, well, I, I want to design watches. And, uh, but he, he didn't have exactly much of a background in it. And so, but when they went to business together, um, I guess Diaz did a couple of the designs. Now, the designs he did looked nothing at all like uh, uh, Roger Doobie's. Doobie had, I mean, his, I, I'm not saying they're the most attractive ones, but, but in his own mind, they're not Patek. <laughs> but if I can get a Geneva seal on the movement, then he's accomplished what Patek Philippe has been doing for years, except his window was a lot smaller than that. Okay, so, so, he, so he starts getting these Geneva seals on his movement. And the early ones, he I think he may have had two kind. On the one hand, he had a, he did a, a, a one of the early ones was a perpetual calendar with bi retrograde. Okay, now he and uh, you know Mark Viderec went back and he uh, if he hadn't at the time it was sort of what starting up Agenor. So uh, so this so now I'm trying to find out about this movement that he had in, in the watches 
that wasn't the JD RD, RD 57 because the RD 57 was Lamania, all right? And it's a really good looking Lamania and uh, uh, Doobie did a lot of, uh, of work on it, that's to be sure, but it wasn't his from the get-go. So that, that was what I was looking for. Now, one of the clues I had was that there was an, another watch called the Sympathy by uh, Roger Dupy. And the Sympathy had this look like a pillow um, shaped case, but the pillow would look more like a throw pillow that you might have a little square one with the corners. And so the, let me, let me show you what I, see if I got a pin with ink in it here. I'll show you what, what, what I was looking for. Not so much as a design I was crazy about, but it was one. Nah, hang on a second. I'm one of these old fashioned types who uses a, a fountain pen. So I had just switched fountain pen today. And so my, the one I switched to is a little dry. Let me see if I can get it now. Okay, um, Okay. This is, this is something that had these little pointy things on them, and uh, the sympathy was very much shaped this way. Uh, one that Diaz did, actually it wasn't, wasn't too bad, but it was very conventional. It was like a looked like a series of squares going in. And of course he had nothing to do with the uh, creating the movement. And so I was looking for this. Well, the sympathy has it, in fact, very much that shape, but also this other watch, this uh, sports watch he had uh, called the Easy Diver was, and it, and it had different kinds of movements in it. But the one that was that was his still had these little points, uh, pointy things on it. They looked like one of those throw pillows on a couch, and somebody put a round um, uh, watch tile on the face of it. And so uh, that was where I found this one movement that seemed to be, and this was the one that had all the Geneva seals. And there's not a thing I can find about it. Uh, I found some different places. Um, Watch prosing, I think. There's this one guy there I know who's, who's really sharp. And so he, he was going on about it. And uh, he was talking about this other movement that he said was based on the RD12. Uh, the Yeah, RD12. And it was called the RD681 or something like that. Who knows why? But um, he said oh, it just wasn't as good as the RD12 because they went from having this gold rotor to having something, I don't know, made, made out of something uh, less noble. And, and it was, he was sort of going on about that, but he knew it. I mean, it's, it's not like it's unknown, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't even find what the frequency of the doggone thing is. And so I've been looking all over for it. And, you know, that's a fun thing about watch collection. I mean, it's a real mystery. <laughs> and of course, you know, my next plan is is I'll call Rod, uh, Roger Dubuis uh, factory. I mean, you call a call a boutique, you might as well call a <laughs> you know, a clown factory or something. Uh, in terms of knowing about something that they're not selling today, uh, so I don't know. Maybe one of you guys knows about it. It's RD. Oh man, uh, Mark, I think it's a fourteen. Okay, I think. Anyway. Um, I just, it, it's been one of those things. You know, I had the same thing with this, uh, the um, Jacques 736. And, of course, I went to one of the groups, and the experts in the groups had proven without a doubt that it was by Jacques Droz. <laughs> and it wasn't. 
Um, and so now I'm not finding bad information. I'm just not finding any at all. Um, I even uh, hooked up with the uh, uh, the Roger Dubuis group on a Facebook page and asked them about it. <laughs> I'm waving. Okay, so what have you guys been talking about? Hi, Eddie. How you doing? Hi, Val. Um, Mark in. How are you? Okay, let's see. Hey, level 11, Fahrenheit 451. How's it going, Kaz? Thanks again, Kaz. Hey, Raj. Uh, substitute Rebel for Maverick or Firebrand. Oh, okay. Hey, Dwayne. Um, yeah, I know. I've already, I've uh, PM uh, Kaz. I already PM Drick <laughs> to find out, to find out whether he had that, uh, that same movement. I, uh, um, Mark, I've been using RD12 and 14 for some reason, but I, I think it's just, uh, I think it's just the 14, but I'm not positive. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Brendan, is Zane on this channel? If is does Zane know about these kinds of things? Hey Blake, I just don't like the RD style. Maybe that makes uh, makes me weird. Blake, no, something else makes you weird. The uh, the thing about the um, uh, it's it's not like I, I was looking at all the new ones. It's not a style that I'm particularly attracted to. to tell you the truth, um, but I but there's something else about it that I really like, namely that. Uh, Doobie was like, eh, I want to do something different. And I don't know, not including anything that any of his scribbles that Diaz did. Uh, he and Diaz were in it together, but Diaz was, like I said, he was a waiter in a Swiss restaurant from Portugal, and somehow we thought he was okay. <laughs> and then apparently when uh, he, you know, was one of the two owners of the company, uh, he became a real pain in the neck. I, I, say, I say this from a couple reports, so it may not have been true. It may have been the nicest guy in the world and is, is had to, you know, I mean, if you take Patek Philippe, Patek Philippe was, uh, Patek was the business guy and Philippe was the, uh, the watchmaker. Before that, it was uh, Patek um, uh, Chapek, and Chapek was the watchmaker, and then he went off and started his own watch company. But, you know, here, uh, there, so it's not, but it, it just sort of the interesting thing was the choice of someone to go into business with. And I have no idea how that came about. That's probably a whole separate story. Um, the corner looms. Yeah, Blake, you're right. It is, and it's something I didn't like either, but you know, like a lot of things, it's a, that means it's this. That means if I see those little points, that means I know that Roger Dubuis worked on it. It's his design. Diaz never had his mitts on the thing. And then if it has the um, Geneva seal, then I know it's one that he did, as opposed to, you know, uh, see, uh, uh, Richemont bought them, I think, in 2008. Okay. Uh, they had planned, there were some negotiations going on in 2007. I think by the time uh, they sold it, Diaz owned 60%. I don't know how that happened, but he did. So they bought Diaz's uh, share plus whatever else, uh, anyone else who, who was, you know, they sold it to him. And so it became Richemont. And Richemont had a lot of ideas. There are some dumb things in the early ones in terms of the naming. Um, they were very strange names. I don't know whether that was um, uh, Roger Duby or his sidekick, you know, Sancho Panza. You know, they were both, they were two, yeah, sort of a good, you know, one was Quixote and, and Duby, and then Panza was the sidekick. Um, yeah, now, uh, Dominic, the, R, the RD uh, chronograph, the older one, okay, they have this, it's part of this easy diver. And I'm not, I think the chronograph is the, has the RD57, which is a Lamania movement. And you look at the back and it's gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, it's all of these, um, all of the different bridges and things that I 
that I think really look great. Yeah, uh, Mark, I had, a, you know, listen, that, that was my, sorry, Mark, uh, that's what I was doing. And, and I, you know, I wasn't, you know, 14, 12. Uh, can a Geneva seal balance a beach ball on its nose? Oh, man. <laughs> if Orbit, as a matter of fact, it can. Uh, the old RD is much better. Right. Yeah, this is... See, what I was trying to find is this, is that uh, when I started collecting, you know, I'd see these stories about Roger Doobie and some of the stuff that he had done and thought, you know, boy, wouldn't it be cool to have one of his watches? It's sort of like, um, you know, he, he came... He started making watches back in the 50s, 1950s. But I think... Um, Laurent Ferrier and some of these other guys, some of these older uh, watchmakers did too, but they started having their own watch companies sometime in the 90s. And this is Parmigiani, F.P. F Jorn was 1999. And then some of these other guys, uh, Vuton Lana uh, was working at uh, Parmigiani when he decided to have his own company. So, you know, you, you have all of this kind of stuff. And to me, that's what the most interesting thing, you know, for, uh, well, no, uh, uh, the, the, for my Beauvais, I don't know who was the watchmaker. I know it wasn't Beauvais. He, he's gone. Uh, but I do know it's Demier. And so that, that's something about it. And the relationship between Demier and uh, Beauvais 1822, which, you know, both owned by, uh, Pascal uh, Rafi. Uh, but I don't, you know, and if I want to find out about the movement, not a problem. But boy, and he's other on this uh, RD14, it is, yeah, Forbin, right. Yeah, he did only two years ago. It was funny. I had I had been planning on a, doing a video on it. And so two days before I released my video, he died. And it was like, huh. You know, it was like, well, I better, I better watch it. Who I do a video on? <laughs> so, like, for, it was before they saw my video. Anyway, have you tried to compare pictures of backsides of the old sympathy was the easy diver? No, I haven't. But that's a good idea, Fahrenheit. Uh, I'll try that. I, I, I have. Um, it, it's just one of those things, you know. You got this. The, the trouble with the RD fourteen. In a in a watch is that that stupid big old rotor gets in the way, but you know then you realize hey that's a gold rotor, <laughs> so you get it's easily to be distracted by that, and then they have a little this little bitty bridge for something I don't know it's one of those little you know finger bridges, and um, and then on it there's the um, the Geneva seal. So it, it, it's it's like, you know, and I know why he wanted the Geneva seal, and it's because he had worked so long with Patek Philippe. About the same time, uh, I think Chopard also got a Geneva seal, because in order to get one, you had to live in the, uh, you had to have X amount percent of the watch made in the uh, canton of Geneva. And so... That was what the, that's why the Geneva seal was uh, developed in the first place, because a lot of companies, uh, watchmakers were saying their, theirs were made, were made in Geneva and they weren't. Uh, of course, F.P. Jorn could care less about COSC or Geneva seals, uh, but he did put, a, I think he started putting on his watch, made in Geneva now, as opposed to the whole, that whole brouhaha about the Swiss made. I don't think he would Dain to put that on there anymore than you trust CUSC. Hey, Rohit, how you doing? Um, Dubuis. Yeah, you're right, uh, Eddie. I, 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 I do try it. Dubuis. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, controversial. I think things get watered down 
when a holding company buys you. I agree. I, I think, see, the thing was, though, is that um, Roger Dubuis had left the company, I think, in around, but right around 2005. He said, I'm done. Hasta la vista. He left. And it wasn't until a couple years later that they were bought by um, Richemont. So it was like there wasn't anything when he was actually actively involved in it uh, during the Richemont period, which has been since, uh, you know, uh, the last, what, 14 years, 13 years, something like that, 12 years. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, there's... Um, and then they have a list. If you go to all of the all of the usual sources, you'll see this wonderful list of all of these complicated movements that he made. But you don't see that RD fourteen, and uh, but you'll see it on the watches. You can go to um, eBay or uh, Chrono twenty nine, uh, Chrono twenty four, C Mark. I, I get them all mixed up the numbers. You go to Chrono, and you can see pictures of it. And if they have a picture of the back and the uh, rotor's not in the way, you'll see it all over the place, uh, RD-14. And so you know it's not an RD-57. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a real, it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, but it's, you know, <laughs> I'm not sort of running out of gas. What I'd like to do is find somebody who worked with Roger Dubuis back then it might be Diaz. Maybe I can try to find where Diaz is and ask him about it. Um, yeah, there you go, Fahrenheit 450. It's the Lamania 2310 base. Really, a, that's a beautiful watch. Uh, the late 1980s, Mr. Dubuis was working with Jean-Marc Viderick. Yes, yes, he was. That I found out about that when I was learning about my Harry Winston because they develop a bi-retrograde perpetual um, calendar together. And the bi-retrograde part I learned was by Viterec and the perpetual movement part was by um, uh, Dubuis. So here you have these two guys who are like super good great deal of mutual admiration for each other. I, you know, and so um, uh, Jean-Marc Viderec said, oh, I'm going to go start my own company. And what he did, though, was he made movements and stuff for, for different people, but are some element of it, like the by retrograde and my Harry Winston. See, both, yeah, both, both of the guys were working on, at Harry Winston during the time my watch was made. So I, that's why, among other reasons, I really enjoy that watch. Um, of course, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of people, they take one look at the, the watch and they'll ask about, oh, you know, I don't like the looks of that, or uh, it's too big or too small or too this or too that. And that's fine. I like to find out about the, the history behind it, and especially if there's intrigue. Now, there's other than, you know, Sort of the, like I said, Quixote and Pancho Sanza making up the duo that was for for um, Roger Dubuis. I don't know. Uh, and one has the roulette thing. Yeah, they have the the major ones they had. I think they came with the uh, that's it, the Excaliburs that they had, and the Excalibur had um, they had the Excalibur. What else they have? Then they had the Easy Diver, and there are a couple, oh, and the Sympathy. Uh, those were the main models. the The Easy Diver, at some point, lost these little pointy things. Okay, this had more of a pillow shape uh, behind it. It looked like it was. It looked like I said. It looked like a you know a, a round watch uh, sitting on a pillow on the couch. So, uh, hey, Frank Asset, how you doing? I think that new Chopex port, fourth watch looks nice. I think so too, especially the um, especially the band. I still remember uh, 
when I'd seen a Roger uh, Dubuis watch for the first time, it was Tourbillon worn by not at all corrupt politician, <laughs> by a not at all corrupt politician at a dinner. Oh, that, that was a rare dinner. <laughs> you know, but when I, I lived in Chicago for, uh, well, I lived up in northern Illinois for a couple of years. And uh, they used to define um, an honest politician as one who stayed bought. <laughs> that's right. That's an honest politician. Um, Cartier has a role at uh, yeah. Hey, Orange Hand, Europe is great. Okay, politician in North America don't wear nice watches in public. Yeah, they don't. You're right. Um, uh, that's too bad, too. Well, there's a good reason for it. Um, the month is appealing. Yes, I agree, Dominic. Yeah, it's called the Mones K. Okay. That one was the one that I think that's a, has a movement called the RD681, which is based on the RD14, but somehow it pales by comparison. I don't know how. I read that by a guy who knows stuff. <laughs> it's one of the uh, uh, Rot Prozine guys. forgot his name. Guy, he just knows this stuff backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, Val, that's true. Hi, Crappy. How you doing? Glad you liked the Chop Pack video. Yeah, Chopek is, we, we discussed that this morning, not so much Chopek, but because of Chopek is sort of how, how do we, uh, what do we really call in-house versus not in-house? It's, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, with the micro rotor. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a very cool, uh, it's a very cool movement. Uh, the, the balance in the spring was done by Otto, Otto uh, Kalpa. And some other parts were done by other ones that Chopek list right next to the watch. I found this list of things and had all of these guys, and we'd like to thank our friends at yada, 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 all of these places. And I thought, well, you know, that's, <laughs> that's really upfront about them as opposed to, you know, doing what some other watch companies do. They, stick in a cheap movement and give it a fancy name that sounds like it's uh, manufactured. There's also Sakozy. He's no slouch. Um, didn't he say a man without a Rolex isn't successful? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> was, you know, there's, uh, people say a lot of things, some of which are true. Oh, man. Well, listen, um, so I guess it's the RD14 I'm looking for. And, um, you know, Val, that's a good point. I, I saw some of his designs, and I thought they were uh, Frank, both Frank Mueller and um, Richard Neely. They had, especially his new ones, they all look that way. They have, they're all skeletonized. You can't tell the time with them. Uh, but I do think... They were some of the late ones, actually, some of the late designs that I think that uh, Dubuis uh, did. So, anyway, well, look, guys, um, thank you all for coming today. And if you see any, if you find out anything about that uh, RD14, let me know. Uh, because, I, like I said, I, I don't even know the frequency of the doggone thing. So, <laughs> anyhow. Take care and uh, be safe.